So I'm going to try and keep this under 10 minutes because uh, people seem to get bored if it gets much longer than 10 minutes. So I'm going to go over everything pretty quick. This is just basically uh, to give you an idea of what exactly is on a motherboard. So what we have here is uh, just a generic uh, Intel LGA 775 motherboard. Um, it's a little bit higher end so some of the specifications are a little bit better. Uh, but typically this is what you'd see when you're buying or looking at a motherboard. Uh, again, this is just an LGA 775 motherboard. Nothing special about it. Um, but like I said before, typically most of the, the features on this board you'll find pretty much anywhere else when you're looking for another motherboard. Uh, when we move down to the right side of the board, um, there's six serial ATA or SATA ports on the board. Uh, this is where you connect your hard drives or your CD-ROM or DVD ROM drives. Uh, this board has six of them, uh, the red one being uh, E, serial ATA, um, which is kind of designated for hooking up external drives. Um, however, you can use it as a standard serial port anyway. Uh, and this particular motherboard supports uh, a RAID array, a RAID 5, 0, or 1. Uh, as we move over a little bit more, these are these pin configurations are for USB. Uh, most cases come with uh, some ribbon cable that you just can plug into these pins and then you could use the front panel USB or maybe some extra USB ports on the system. Alright, and as we slide over just a little bit further, um, this board has another pin configuration for USB. Um, and then a little speaker that's built in, and the speaker is used to give you notifications from the BIOS, so it tells you if there's problems. Um, and then we have an IDE uh, controller here, uh, and this is for older style hard drives or uh, CD-ROM drives. And just above that we have the CMOS for the BIOS battery. Um, this retains your date and time and BIOS settings. It can be popped out just by pushing on it like that, uh, and then you can take it out. Uh, not like that, but yeah, you can take it out. Um, generally, they don't go bad, but if they do, they're pretty cheap, and you just pop a new one in. Uh, back next to the serial ATA ports, there's a jumper, uh, and this jumper works in conjunction with your battery uh, and your BIOS, and you can pull it off, uh, and then jump it to the other pins, and then put it back, and then what that does is reset your BIOS back to the default settings. Okay, so moving back to where we were, uh, these ports are for FireWire, works the same as a USB, um, and then the pins next to it are the actual HD audio uh, that you can hook up, and then the other pins on the yellow here are for the regular audio, and some system boards come with headphone jacks or speaker jacks in the front of your case, or extra ones in the back. Uh, the next uh, slot we're looking at here is a PCI. Uh, slot it is older and pretty much being uh, outdated uh, because it is slower but you can still get sound cards uh, video cards uh, network cards are common to hook up to this port uh, but like I mentioned it is a, a legacy port and since it is a slower speed uh, it is actually becoming more and more out of date so just to give you a reference what you can uh, connect to this point here I have a uh, Wi-Fi adapter um, and then that just plugs right into the slot and it pretty much looks just like this. So just above that we have a PCI Express 1X and these are typically used for the same thing as the older PCI slot are used for. Um, some expansion for USB, FireWire, things like that. Uh, not used as much either. Uh, this next slot's a 16X PCI Express slot. Uh, this is typically used by graphics cards. Some motherboards will actually have more than one, so you could use uh, multiple graphics cards in SLI mode. Um, and then normally you can see they have a little latch on the end to lock the graphics card down due to the size, weight, and usually heat. And just off to the side of that one, there's a auxiliary power. Um, this came about in the Penny and 4 days. It just provides extra power to the CPU. Um, and that's a good thing to plug in when you're putting your system together. Otherwise bad things happen. Uh, and usually pretty close to that, the power connector is the actual CPU uh, socket. 
uh, it has a little protective cover that just pops off and then it has a latch on the side that you just unlatch open it up flip up the top cover that holds the CPU down and then that's where your CPU sits and for uh, illustration purposes I actually have a 775 uh, CPU here um, you can see that the pins all line up with the, the back of the CPU and then when we flip it over and take a look uh, at the other side um, the top of the CPU is actually notched out uh, there's little marks on the bottom and on the top of the CPU and those are keyed in so you really can't put it in backwards or upside down or anything like that it really only goes in one way and it just sits in there like that close the cover and relatch it and then we'd hook up the heatsink again but back next to our CPU there's a four pin fan connector and that's where we connect the actual fan from the heatsink to uh, it's a special connector it has four connectors uh, monitors speed controls the speed um, and then power of course when we look back at the CPU socket you'll notice there's four holes drilled off on the corners um, and what those are for those are where you connect the heat sink that comes with your CPU or aftermarket one and typically that's what they uh, connect with some some heat sinks will come with aftermarket parts uh, but this is a standard heat sink here that comes with the Intel processor um, you can see that it has the little plastic brackets that snap into place um, on the holes on the motherboard uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. It does take a little pressure to uh, get the plastic snaps to snap into the holes. And there's a definite click noise that uh, you'd hear when you snap the CPU in. Now this is a dual channel DDR2 memory. Uh, this board supports up to 800. Uh, so we have a channel A which is indicated by the blue and a channel B which is indicated by the black and that's set up so each CPU would have its own memory allocation it's also usually a good idea to match RAM, so 512 on one side, 512 on the other, uh, things like that. Then over here we have the 2x12 power connector. This is the main power that supplies the board. Um, and then, of course, nothing will work without connecting that to the power supply first. Then if we look just below that, this is the actual part that uh, connects to your power switch, your LED, uh, and your reset switch on the front of the motherboard. Um, the, it's color coded and just above that you can see the little silk screen uh, of what the, the actual colors mean. And keep in mind the, the power LED and the hard drive LED are actually, they do have a polarity so you have to get those right or your LEDs in the front of the case don't show up or turn on. So a couple other things on the motherboard that I didn't actually mention when we were going around. There are um, actually little fan connectors around the motherboard staggered around this one only has a couple um, and then there there are three pins uh, it would indicate speed and then the actual power to the fan some motherboards actually have quite a few more but this one just has a couple on it as with the most of the modern motherboards uh, you'll notice that there's more heat sinks like this one has a raid controller on it so it does raid 0 1 and 5 and that's what that heatsink is. And then the uh, larger heatsink in the middle of the board is usually for the north or south bridge. Now on all the motherboards, they also have the ports that hang out the back of the computer. Um, and then this is where you connect most of your USB uh, keyboard, stuff like that. This particular model has onboard video and then DVI as well. And a number of USB firewire, uh, more USB ethernet, and then of course sound. Um, recording output input and then uh, lastly there's a neat little plate that goes on that protects it uh, makes it look pretty uh, and that's about it